Today we're making the pesto stuffed mushrooms. What I really love about this is we're literally taking two recipes from the book and we're putting them together. So we're gonna be making the basil pesto and then we're taking that pesto and we're stuffing some cremini mushrooms. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about some of the ingredients here just to kind of give you an idea of what we're doing, why we're doing it, and so on and so forth, and substitutions. So I have here is some cremini mushrooms. Uh, I like these just because they're a little, typically a little bit bigger um, and I typically just like the flavor better. You can also use button mushrooms as well. Or we can simply put these in large portobello mushrooms and we can stuff those and we can talk about that a little bit later. We have some fresh aged Parmesan cheese. We have olive oil, kosher salt. I have fresh garlic, cloves of garlic. Um, we have two cups of fresh basil and the fresh basil part is really important. Um, dry will not suffice. And then I have some almonds. Um, I didn't have any pumpkin seeds and actually couldn't find any. Um, and the reason that I use pumpkin seeds is actually because I, I can avoid having any nut allergies um, at home. I'm just kind of making this up. So um, substituting almonds is just fine. Um, you can do walnuts. If you have pistachios, you can do pistachios as well because it's green. Um, so honestly, any type of substitution is fine. Traditionally, pesto is made with pine nuts. So you've got that flexibility. Um, and then on the side, I've got some butter, some parsley we're gonna chop a little bit later, and then I have some uh, panko breadcrumbs that we're gonna be mixing and topping the pesto stuffed mushrooms with that. So without further ado, um, I'm going to point out we've got a food processor here. This is gonna be the easiest way to accomplish your pesto to get it really nice and fine. So I'm literally just going to throw in my ingredients. Okay, I've got my Parmesan cheese, I got my fresh garlic. Um, if you don't have any fresh lime juice, that's okay. If you have anything acidic, even like maybe a little bit of white wine, you can do that if you don't have it at all. It's not truly gonna make or break your pesto. I'm gonna put in our salt and our basil leaves. From here, we're just gonna pulse it. Um, because this is a big food processor, sometimes it's gonna take a little bit of like starting and stopping to kind of move the, the product around. If you have a smaller food processor for this size of recipe, it should be fine. But I'm gonna use the pulse um, button. <laughs> kind of take it off. Anything on the sides will kind of push down. And then we'll add our olive oil. And you might be wondering, could I use a different oil? You certainly can, um, but I will say that having a, a good quality olive oil in this particular instance, um, is helpful because a good quality olive oil has a lot more flavor, and so that's where you don't want to chintz on, uh, on any flavor. So canola oil would be okay, just doesn't have a lot of flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my lid back on. We're gonna let her pulse up more. So a lot of pestos traditionally have a lot more oil um, in them, and that's what typically is kind of what makes them maybe not as healthier for you. It's not that it's not healthy per se, but usually the quantity that we're having to, to add with all that extra oil can make it difficult. So with this recipe, it's a lot of flavor, a lot of basil, garlic, right? A little bit of oil just to kind of give us that, um, that smoother texture and that mouth feel for it. Okay, this looks nice and well blended. Um, and you can kind of see, you've got kind of a nice pesto um, texture there. So from there, I'm gonna leave this in here. I'm gonna go ahead and just start kind of cleaning our cremini mushrooms. Now I have a personal preference. I do not like to really, really clean um, my mushrooms, um, especially for something like this because it's gonna get too damp. So I wanna make sure that they're as dry as possible. Certainly you can take um, a paper towel, a brush them, if you have like a mushroom brush, or if you have like, um, any type of, uh, even if it's like a toothbrush that's meant for your mushroom cleaning, um, you could do that as well. Um, and don't ever feel like you need to throw these stems away. Um, so if you're someone who's kind of a minimalist, um, you could actually take the mushrooms, put them in your pesto, pulse this up, and then put that in with your stuffing. So 
That way there's really very, very minimal waste. So from there what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to take our, our bowl off here and I'm going to go ahead and start stuffing our mushrooms. Now something to kind of keep in mind, depending on the size of the mushrooms will kind of depend on how far your pesto is going to go, right? So kind of keep that in mind when you're looking at how much to prep or to multiply the recipe. These work really great as um, appetizers. They also um, are really great if you're just trying to have something that's a, like maybe like a, a little bit more flavorful vegetable um, with the rest of your meal. And it should have just a punch of flavor. Just kind of setting that in. And sometimes people ask, well, should I season the mushroom itself? I mean, you certainly could, but I wouldn't go too crazy again because this pesto is going to have so much flavor to it. Now some other fun kind of creative ideas with pesto. So you're like, okay, John, I'm not gonna necessarily go through all of the work to make this pesto just for these mushrooms. Absolutely. So a couple of fun things that you can do is, and we had this for lunch yesterday, we did a pesto pasta dish. Um, you can also do like a pesto rub chicken breast, pork, shrimp, you name it, doesn't matter. You can also make a pesto cream sauce. Um, and so you could literally use like chicken stock, your pesto, and just a touch of cream. So it has that creamy look um, and that little bit of that mouthfeel, but doesn't have so many calories. So you could do that as well. So there's a lot of um, versatility in this recipe in particular. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our panko crust. And really the whole point of the panko crust is really to give us that crunch. So I've got my panko breadcrumbs. I have some melted butter. Yes, I know, I said butter. Um, you know, the, the big thing about healthy cooking is not to completely take everything away, right? So we do wanna have the butter because we are gonna have that mouthfeel. So um, yes, this is butter. Um, if you prefer to use olive oil, that is A-OK. -okay. And then I have some parsley, truly for color. Now you could jazz this up even a little bit more and add more flavor if you wanted to and add garlic powder to this. But I think you're gonna have so much garlic um, in your pesto. I really don't think that it needs it. Otherwise, you could add just a little bit of salt and pepper. But again, I think you've got such a, a blast of flavor in our pesto. I really don't think it's going um, to need it. So from here, I'm just kind of picking off the leaves. And I, I always kind of say, like, love is in the leaves. So that's where your flavor is going to be. Um, so I, I try to not get too much um, stem in there. Just going to chop this up. <laughs> So another kind of um, awesome thing about pesto is you can freeze it. So um, it lasts quite a while in your refrigerator, but if you're like, oh, I'm not really good about using things up super quickly, um, or you know you're going out of town or what have you, honestly, I think if you just um, put it in little um, ice cube trays um, and then make little blocks of it, and then you can pull out one block you know, every other week or something, I think that would be really um, useful. Um, and what I like to do too is, um, at the end of summer, usually my basil plant is out of control. And so that's when I just pick it all and just make a big batch of pesto. And then I kind of have it for the winter. All right, so I wanna make sure that I get this really nice and finely chopped. So it kind of blends in really well with the panko. All right. Okay, so literally just gonna scoop this up, place it in our little bowl here. Grab my butter, and use one of my spoons from before. And this is just a quarter cup. I mean, we're not even going to use half of this mixture per se. So um, what's great about this is you can freeze this as well. So the next time you wanna make your stuffed mushrooms, if it's something like, it's like a family favorite, um, you can just pull this out of the freezer and then top it off. So that's, that's what it's really um, meant to do is when you're making something to kind of kill two birds with one stone. So you're making more of it and then you're going to transfer it to another meal, right? So maybe you're making some sort of like, you know, broccoli casserole, or maybe you wanna put this on the baked mac and cheese that has the broccoli in it. That's a great thing to do too. It's not like this has any super significant um, strong flavor, but it would give it a little bit of crunch and it's pretty. All right, this looks good, okay. So all I'm going to do is just put a little bit of our mixture on top of our mushroom. 
gives it a little bit of height. And having that butter in there is gonna help kind of brown it, so it's gonna give us some really good color too. We are good to go. Now you wanna bake this at a pretty high temperature. Um, and a real purpose of that is because mushrooms have so much moisture. If you bake them really slowly, that moisture is just gonna kind of weep out and that's just gonna sit there. And then the mushrooms are just gonna kind of simmer in it. So a higher temperature oven is gonna help evaporate that extra moisture, keep that um, panko being able to be crisp so that the um, panko doesn't get soggy, the mushroom's not soggy. So you've got all of these things kind of working um, to the higher good of your product by having a higher temperature. So it's just kind of understanding the ingredient truly. So if we had zucchini, it would be the same thing. So from here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and place this right in the oven. And this is gonna take about 15 minutes. Now remember, depending on the size of the mushrooms, that is going to depend on how long it takes to cook and your desired, you know, maybe like I'm really shriveled up and tight and others might just like them really nice and kind of like an al dente you know, texture, okay? Looks like our timer went off. This is 15 minutes. These look amazing. Look at that. You know, I find any reason to have mushrooms in my diet. So this is kind of one of my favorite things to do with mushrooms. Plus, you know, put them on pizza, whatever. So yeah, here we go. We have our um, basil pesto stuffed mushrooms and our little crunchy top.